Hi everybody, welcome back to Elizabeth Burns This and That. And today I will be reviewing Given Names, which is the uh, it's a semi-autographical book, autobiographical book that Stu Fabe wrote. And in it is his character, Nathan, who's the narrator. And his character hits the Whopper Ball jackpot. It's a very straightforward plot, but even though it's predictable, it's very compelling. It keeps you devoted to Nathan's story all the way to the end. There's also a reference to the organizations that Stu actually gives to. And, and, it's, and the reality of that. And how people are affected by just such um, unconditional agape giving. It provides an uplifting and motivating tale. One that uh, proves kindness changes people's lives positively, particularly through that of unconditional love and how that impacts others as they give to others. It's just a proliferation of kindness and its effects. And I give it five stars, two thumbs up, and of course I think this is a home run in Stu's case. And I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of excerpts from it. He, uh, he signed this in 2023 in August. August 21st, 2023, is when this actually came out, and the back actually gives a better description of what I just wrote, and he, he, pose, he poses the question, he pauses the question. You might have to pause a moment. Yeah, we'll pause a moment. This is off-camera guy, John. <laughs> uh, we've got a combine oh, coming combine. in. I don't know if he's pulling in here or going down Maybe. the street. I think he pulled over to let Maybe. the cars pass. It'll be noising here for a yeah, moment. Yeah, just wait until he gets out of the way. We <laughs> should continue on. And yeah, we'll wait a minute. That's one downside of being out of the studio and filming outside. This is true. We're at our favorite uh, our train favorite watching rails, location. Real fanning spot. We uh, photograph and video trains here in our free time. Yeah. It's a beautiful area. We call this area the Grassy Knoll. Sounds like the combine has moved on. We've still got some daylight left. So um, tell us a little bit about Stu. Well, uh, Stu is a multi-talented individual. He plays harmonica. Of course, he's a writer. He's also a photographer. And he collects old-fashioned cameras, which he has his own museum for. And just how many cameras does he have now? I don't recall. A lot. A, um, a ton, yeah. Yeah, he could outfit a full-blown <laughs> photography camera museum. <laughs> And these are old cameras, yeah. like from 1850 you know, up to 1900, a lot from that. that area. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's these just, cameras are in beautiful condition. It's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll read the back of the book because the description on the back of the book is a lot better than what I wrote. And it, it pauses the question, have you ever thought about what you'd do if you won the lottery? I mean, like an astronomical figure north of $200 million. Who would you tell? Who would you trust to manage your money? What would you buy? And how much would you give away to? And whom? Well, most of us might simply say, just give me the dough. I'm sure I can figure it out. Truth is, I doubt many of us will really know the answers to those questions until we were faced with such a stunning windfall. And then it begs the existential question, how would it change your life? These are, the These are the issues that Nathan Andrews confronts as he barrels headlong into great wealth and faces sudden questions about his personal relationships, who he is, and what his life is all about. I'm actually going to read a little bit here. I look around my office for Bella, but she's gone off in favor for more entertaining company or a Sunday, sunny, win sunny window seat, sorry that's difficult for me to read, where she can survey her queendom. I sit at my desk and look at the very early pages of my new mo new novel, but I know in my heart of hearts I haven't totally invested in the story I've been working on. It's got potential, but I keep thinking that there's got to be a deeper story than that's time for me to tell right now. During my previous nine novels, I scratched a lot of personal itch itches with suspense and natural elements. Now I keep thinking I wanted something different. No more murder and supernatural stuff. Maybe. A little but something more personal 
I turn my computer off and look around my office. There's a lifetime of memories here. Each one a story into itself. Fossils I collect from creek beds growing up, books spanning a broad range of subjects and images, future and antiques that I've owned for decades, wonderful paintings by my father that almost feel like siblings to me, enduring photos of our family, and night sky photographs that I'm especially fond of. This room, this study, is my inter inner sanctum. I'm gonna go ahead and read another chapter. This is actually from chapter 11. I awake early in the morning, thinking about the next chapter for my book, Given Names. The intriguing challenge I've always contended with as a writer is composing what comes next in the story. With my newfound wealth, it would be easy for me to chuck it all and spend my time just buying stuff or thinking of creative ways to give money away. Fact of the matter is, I just love writing, and when my thoughts flow, I feel true contentment. I keep a handwritten sheet of paper on my desk. with the names of people and places that Martha and I may choose to support, and I try to decide which one would be an exciting subject for the next chapter in my novel, and in my life. <clears throat> Thankfully, there's a lot to choose from, which makes me think that I'm probably less of a snarky critic than I tell people I am. It's only about seven o'clock, but I pick up my phone and call Joe Daniels in Cincinnati. Phone rings twice and I hear my consigliere's voice. It's gotta be you, Nathan. No one else calls me this early unless a client with some sad family news. Good morning, Joseph. I knew you'd be up. Just wanted to touch base with you. Right. I take it this means that Marlita's still asleep and you wanted someone to talk with. Bingo! Even Bella's got more entertaining things to do this morning than listen to my blarney. So I've been thinking about some things I want to share with you if you've got a set. Share away, mon ami. I begin telling him about the gifts to Tess Monaco. Stella phoned me last night, last evening, as she was leaving Tess and heading back to Greencastle. She was so excited and kept going on and on about how overwhelmed Tess was by her new home and the prospect of starting in her new sunflower business. We did a good thing, Joe. That's wonderful, Nathan. And how is the lovely Stella? I think she's pretty. She's a pretty happy lady these days. She asked me if I heard from you and was wondering when you might be returning to Greencastle. Hmm, interesting. Joe muses. Yeah, I thought so too. Back in my pre-Marlita days, I'd be known how far kissing a girl's hand and sprouting a little French would get me. Then I'd be wearing a beret and creating like Leonard Cohen. We change subject and get down to some serious business. So what's on your mind, Nathan? Marlita and I have been doing a lot of cogitating about organizations in our Putnam County community, and I was thinking of asking you to prepare a couple of checks and come here to deliver some surprise gifts. Sounds great to me. Which organizations are you thinking of? And when did you have in mind? Do you want me to read something else from it or is that pretty good? Well, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the fact that he always um, incorporates Cincinnati, which is actually where he's from originally. And Putnam County where he's from now into his books and I just I love the way he weaves the yarn he just he pulls you in and he keeps you engaged and wanting to know more of what happens to the characters and given names I know it breaks the fourth wall quite a bit and he's very meta which I enjoyed which made me giggle quite a bit and uh, I found it just it's just wonderful. It's very uplifting and also very inspirational. And I hope that other people get a chance to read it too. And even if it's a small bit of, of money, even if you don't have a lot, you can help somebody else. Even without that, you can help somebody else by giving them a kind word or helping them do something that maybe they wouldn't be able to do themselves. There are other ways to help besides giving someone a sum of money. So I think being charitable and kind is the best reward. And Stu's written a whole series of books uh, most of them are what would you call the genre? Well, historical fiction. Okay. Yeah. And um, this is more of an autobiography. And some are, what would, would you call them, spooky or? Well, paranormal. Paranormal. The Right House was paranormal, which I absolutely adore. The Right House okay. is stupendous. It's a genre that we like a lot. Yeah, I love paranormal fiction, and 
I write a lot of paranormal stories. He's myself. really, uh, really nice, interesting yes. guy. We see him around He's town at events pretty often. <laughs> and, I'm a writer uh, too, and I've been inspired by his work. Yeah. So, uh, and we're we haven't seen one train since there was <laughs> one when we got here. Yeah, that was it. And I got video of it. I'll <laughs> probably post it in the next couple of days. But um, no train since then. No. So you've had a nice quiet spell. Not too many noisy vehicles tonight. No. Uh, one Sunday. combine, so we've been, we've done pretty well with this. Normally, we'll try and record in the studio, but tonight I had plans to meet up with some friends, watch trains, <laughs> get out the big flashlights. That's right. a whole other story. <laughs> and um, so we thought, well, let's just do some uh, of your reviews out here. And it worked just fine. This is absolutely perfect. So, say good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Elizabeth. <laughs> Ciao, Dizzy.